welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to explain how to use the free DOSBox emulator to run retro games or other DOS software on a Windows PC or a Linux system such as a Raspberry Pi. So let's go and get started. Right. Here we are on DOSBox.com where it confirms we can use the software to help us relive the good old days by allowing us to play plenty of old classics that don't run on a new computer. So if we go across to Downloads, you'll see at the top there's a link to download DOSBox for the platform we're currently running, which here is a PC running Windows. But if we look down here, you'll see there's lots of other versions of DOSBox available. But for now, I'm going to stick with the Windows version. And I would point out there is a donation button here if we want to support the project. So we'll click on the download graphic there and it'll take us across to SourceForge where we're going to download the software. Let's wait for the counter. Five, four, three, two, Thunderbirds will launch and so will our piece of software to be downloaded anyway. There we are. And I'm going to download this into a folder I've already created on my computer in download called DOSBox. So I'll save that like that. There we are. Very fast download, very small file. And we can now run this up like that to run up the DOSBox installer. Windows might not like it. We're going to do it anyway. We don't care. We're being wild today. And uh, we will go next on that to accept the license. Yes, we want the files and the desktop shortcut. That'll be fine. Install the software. Nice and fast. There we are. And if we now close down our browser, hopefully, yes, there's a DOSBox icon on our desktop. So if we lend it a double click like that, it'll run up and you'll see DOSBox has run up with a status window, which here has got a very large font because of the way I've got things configured. So I'll just uh, minimize that. And then here we've got the main DOSBox window. And by default on most systems, DOSBox will run up emulating a 640 by 480 DOS display. So it's inevitably rather small on the screen we've got here, which is a pretty typical 1920 by 1080 screen. However, as we'll shortly see, there are all kinds of options to resize things with the quickest one to bring up full screen by pressing Alt Enter like that. And this is a toggle to scale up DOSBox to use as much of the host computer's display as possible. And so here we are running DOSBox full screen in Windows. Now, in the introduction, I did say I'd also cover things on a Linux system where DOSBox can be installed in various ways. But by way of example, let's saunter on over to a Raspberry Pi running Raspberry Pi OS, where I've run up a terminal here. And assuming you've got a fully updated system, you can install DOSBox by going a sudo apt install and a DOSBox like that. And then we'll accept any permissions required like that. And uh, it'll continue. And there we are. We've installed DOSBox in Linux here on a Raspberry Pi. And if we now go to the menu and go to games, there we are, we've got the DOSBox emulator sitting next to Minecraft there. Let's run it up. There is DOSBox. And once again, if we press Alt Enter, we're running DOSBox in full screen mode. Right, here I am back again running DOSBox in Windows, where as you can see by default, we're presented with a Z or a Z prompt where we can enter many standard DOS commands. So for example, I could enter CLS to clear the screen and it would clear the screen, or I could enter DIR for directory listing and get a directory listing here of the Z drive. And this is all very exciting and super nostalgic, but how do we run classic games or other DOS programs? Well, if we go back to standard mode, come out of full screen mode without enter there, and I should point out that going back and forth between full screen mode and non full screen mode in DOSBox can give you a few strange issues with the display now and then. Nothing to worry about, but that can happen. Anyway, as I was saying, back on this computer, I have got a folder here called DOS Progs, where I've got DOS programs, and inside there I've got various other folders with things like games and download, etc. Just to show you in games there, there are some DOS games, and I will show you how to get DOS games from various websites in the next segment of the video. But for now, what we want to do is to make our DOS programs directory there, DOS Progs, available as a drive in DOSBox. So how do we do that? 
Well, for a start, we'll go back to DOSBox and we'll go back to full screen to make things easier to see like that. And we now need to use the mount command, where the syntax is to type mount and then the drive letter we want to mount in DOSBox. We put a space and here we'll do C to mount the C drive and then another space and the local location we're going to mount to that virtual DOSBox drive. And that, if you remember, was C colon forward slash and it was DOS underscore progs. If I can type it right like that, or of course, whatever you called particular directory you stored your DOS programs in. And if I enter that like that, there we are, our drive is mounted and we can access it in a normal DOS way by typing the drive letter under colon. So here if we type C colon and enter, we're now on the C drive. And if I do a DIR for directory listing, there we are, we can see what's on our C drive. And if we wanted to go to the games folder, I could do CD games like that. And uh, we'd be in the games folder, could show you what's in there, just as we saw a few seconds ago in Windows. And it's worth pointing out for navigation purposes, if you want to go back the other way, I could do a change directory CD and a couple of dots like that and enter on that. And it would take us back to where we were, not in the games folder. We always want to be in the games folder. Of course we do. So we'll do a CD games like that. And uh, there we are back in games. And here we can see there are two directories called break and invaders. Guess what's inside there? And also a file called pack PC. And you'll see we've got the file name and the extension slightly separated out as DOS does. And any file which has got an XE and EXE extension is an executable file. So you can run it just by typing in the file name before the extension. So if I type pack PC here like that and enter, it'll run up what I consider to be the best DOS game in the history of creation. And it's telling us here the names of the little pack people which appear in this game, Inky, Pinky, Blinky and Clyde. I thought one of them was called Michael, but obviously not. Anyway, I will press space to start. And there we are, it is ready. And hopefully, oh look, we're back in the wonderful world of pack PC where I don't know what I'm doing, oh dear. It's gone wrong already. You can't play games whilst also, I was gonna say recording video. Lots of people do that on YouTube, don't they? In fact, quite successfully. Let's try and eat a little pack person before we eat. Can we get him? Oh, we did, oh, it's going well here. All the hours you could spend doing this, playing a pack PC here in DOSBox. Anyway, before I get too involved in gameplay, I should show you how to mount a DOSBox drive in Linux. So let's go back to the Raspberry Pi, where I've got the same DOSPROGS folder sitting in my home Pi directory, where most folders will sit on a Raspberry Pi here in Linux. And if we go across to DOSBox, and again bring it up full screen so we can see things as straightforwardly as we can, you can see here the mount command can't use a drive letter in Linux, they've all been eaten by Pac-Man ghosts, and so the mount command here is mount C and then home Pi DOSPROGS and enter, that should work. And we can now change to C, and we can now do a directory listing there, CD games as we did before, and uh, there we are, pack PC once again will run up here in DOSBox on the Raspberry Pi. So we could play that just as we did before, but this time I'm going to press escape to uh, close down that program, and I'm going to show you how you get out of DOSBox, Always good to know how you get out of DOSBox when you're in a full screen mode. The way you do it is typing EXIT exit, and there we are, we have closed DOSBox down. Greetings. Just before we delve into some DOSBox configuration, let's check out some of the places you can download old DOS or disk operating system games. And my two favorite websites for this are this one, dosgamesarchive.com, which has got lots of DOS games, and also dosgames.com, which has also got lots and lots of DOS games and a lovely menu in a DOS font. And I think I've been coming to this site for over 20 years every now and then to download some new DOS games to check out. And today it's very exciting because one of the latest games added is this, Super Pac-Man, a new Pac-Man game, or an old Pac-Man game has been added here to check out. So I'm gonna check this out, and I haven't played this before. This is a live experiment. So I'll download the file. And of course, I've gotta give you the caution that if you're downloading things from the internet, you do so at your own risk. But in my experience, I've never had any problems downloading from dosgames.com. So let's save that file. And there it is, always nice fast downloads for DOS games. 
Let's just open that up. There we are. And we'll uh, extract all the files from the zip. And I'm going to place them into my games directory in DOS program. So I'll change that to games. Always best to be tidy when you're uh, extracting things to use in DOSBox. So we'll extract like that. Shouldn't take a second. There we are. That was super fast, wasn't it? And uh, we just close everything down. Let's be nice and neat and tidy. And we can run up DOSBox. I find it's always best not to have DOSBox running when you're changing things in the directories that the drive is pointing at. Let's go full screen again, out enter, and then mount our drive like that. And if you're wondering, do you have to do that each time? You don't, and I'll show you how to automate that in the next section of the video. But for now, we'll just go into games like that, and hopefully our new game is there. It is, there we are, CD Super Pack Mon. If I can spell again, there we are. And how do we run this? We presume we type S Pac Man. There we are, there's the file there, the empty file, and a new Pac Man game. Oh, look, a note from the author telling us about the game. Oh, 75% finished. Maybe this isn't completely working. Um, oh, this is interesting. My controls don't seem to be entirely responsive here, but never mind. This is, yet I don't think this is quite doing what I'd expected to do. This is not yet a fully fledged piece of software, probably never will become a fully fledged piece of software, but interesting to see. But I think I'll be going back to my original Pac-Man program I was playing earlier. Anyway, there we are. You've seen the principle of downloading and testing out an old DOS game. Many DOS programs work well in DOSBox using its default settings. However, there is a very comprehensive configuration file that you can edit to control just about every aspect of DOSBox. Where this file is located depends on the DOSBox version and the platform you're running. But when you open up DOSBox in Windows like this, you can see in the status window the location of the configuration file which here is in the user profile folder in users, app data, local, and DOSBox. This said, if we navigate to C and we go to program files x86, we can find a DOSBox folder, there we are. And in this folder, we find a batch file for editing the DOSBox configuration file. And if we run that batch file, what it does is to load up notepad with a configuration file preloaded. Oh, and if you're wondering, on a Linux system, the configuration file usually sits in a folder a level or two down from the home folder in a folder called .dosbox, which means that it's normally hidden. So, for example, here in Raspberry Pi OS, if we look under home forward slash pi and then do a view and show hidden, we will find the .dosbox folder. And if we then take a look inside, we find the configuration file, which we can double click to open up for editing in Mousepad. Anyway, back here in Windows, let's take a closer look at the configuration file, which at the top contains comment lines, which explain how to change display settings. And then below this, we have the actual display settings. There they are, where, for example, we could change full screen equals false to full screen equals true if we wanted DOSBox to open in full screen mode. However, here I think I'm going to change window resolution from 64480 to 1280 times 960, or in other words, double the actual resolution of 640 by 480, and which, in combination with the other settings here, will scale the DOSBox window to this size. Note that this particular change to window resolution only works on systems that support hardware scaling and does not work where output equals surface, although here output equals OpenGL, so that is fine. There really are loads and loads of ways of configuring the DOSBox display and finding the one that works for your system and DOS programs usually requires a bit of trial and error. So I would always recommend saving a copy of the configuration file before making changes. Moving down, we can change all kinds of things, including the machine that DOSBox is emulating, how DOSBox renders and scales low resolution modes, things like how the DOSBox CPU is emulated, as well as uh, the sound is uh, set up. 
all sorts of things. We've even got settings for a joystick all the way down here, I think, towards the bottom PC speaker, as you can see. You can change lots of things here in the configuration file, and it's all very well documented. However, the final thing I want to show you is right at the bottom where you can add in auto exec lines. In other words, things which will run at startup. And so here, what I'm going to do is to put in our mount command. There we are, so our C drive will be automatically mounted. And I think we'll even automatically change to our C drive and CD change directory to the games directory. And there we are, with those changes made, let's do a file and uh, save, why not? And then close this down, keep things tidy. And if we now run up DOSBox like that, hey presto, it's opened up with a larger window. It's 640 by 480 display scale to 1280 by 960. And as you can see, it's already mounted our C drive and gone to the games directory. And uh, in there, of course, we know what's there, pack PC. And so I think just to celebrate, I will run up Pack PC and have another play of this game. And I'll do it in full screen mode. Alt Enter, there we are. So I'll get on with playing this game and I'll come back to you after the following Inter title. Now, here I've got a USB gamepad and I've connected this to the computer and I've run up DOSBox. And as you can see in the status window here, it has picked up we've got the gamepad. However, if I go to a game, I've got Pack PC again, let's press start by pressing space there, get it running. And in a second, it'll start up. There we are. And as I hope you can see, I can press the buttons on the gamepad, but it doesn't control the game and I get eaten by a little ghost. It's all very sad indeed. So what do we do about this? Well, what we do is we come out of the game like that and we press control F1 in DOSBox to bring up its key mapper which unfortunately you can't run in a scaled version on the screen, but I can zoom in so you can see what's going on. And what we need to do here is to link events, or in other words, key presses to be reported by DOSBox to programs, to binds, or in other words, the actual keys or buttons we're going to press. So what I'll do here is go and select, first of all, the left arrow there, and I'll do an add to add a bind, and I'll press the left arrow on the gamepad. There we are, it's come up as you can see over there. Do the same thing for the right arrow, and we'll do, other, do another add and press, there we are, the up arrow, and again, do an add and press up, and finally the down arrow, and obviously do another add and press down. And if we now save these and exit, we can now run up our game again, pack PC like that, and press the space bar, and hopefully this time, if we're lucky, Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? Yes, I can now control the uh, pack character using the gamepad, which is working. Oh dear, well, it's working perfectly well, but I'm not working the game very well, but never mind. Let's hope that I can do a little bit better this time. There we are. I've got a little power pill. I can eat a ghost. I can be in charge of the game for a second and things will be going very well indeed. However, you might be thinking, what if you mess up the key mapper? You might get things wrong and it'd be in a, a terrible mess. That's perfectly possible. Do not fear about that. There is an option to deal with that because if we go back to a DOSBox program folder where we were in the last part of the video, you will see here there is an option to run a batch file to reset the key mapper. So if you executed that, all the key mapping goes back to neutral. But of course, that's not what I want to do. I want to go back to my game, which is uh, running over there. And I think I'll uh, full screen it to get the maximum effect. Come on, there we are. And press space. And I'm going to uh, run the game again with the controller. Very, very exciting. And I'm going to get on with playing my favorite DOS game. As we've seen in this video, DOSBox is a great piece of free software that allows us to enjoy retro games and other long-lost DOS software from the golden age of personal computing. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.